Yeah, so I'm Lydia Halley. I'm currently staff developer advocate at Vercel. So it's called like staff developer advocate. So that means kind of like translating, you know, the technical aspect that developers need into also, or well, it's more like, I guess, translating what the product does to developers. So, you know, creating like technical content, writing blog posts, speaking at international conferences, all those things. Yeah, that was the kind of my own like business that I started when I was a bit younger, when I was like 18. Um, I'm still doing that as well because I've only been a developer advocate for a couple months now because I used to be only software engineering. Um, so that's pretty recent. But yeah, I'm also still doing that. So on the side, I'm still, I still have some clients that I just code for like full time. And then with Vercel, it's more like the people aspect, like speaking, like networking, all those things. I mean, I think, okay, so these are like very, of course, different things. So if I just focus on like, I guess the cloud technologies, for example, like when I started coding, when I was very young, I think, well, not very young, like you're all pretty young, of course, but when I was like 13, 12 or something, you know, I initially started with like Tumblr. So it was like front end. And when I, I don't know, it just, I didn't like it. I was always so frustrated with like, I don't really care about, you know, how buttons and whatever look. Um, so then as I started my professional career, I focused more on backend technologies. I was like, okay, this just is a bit nicer to me. Like something is either wrong or right. Like you can't, it's not, it's not as ambiguous as front end development. And then especially with like, you know, the cloud infrastructure and the cloud um, technologies that are out there today, that's still very cutting edge. And the possibilities that you can have with, you know, cloud technologies is like expanding like almost every day. So knowing these technologies to me, I felt like okay, I just have to try to understand what is the problem that these cloud technologies are trying to solve? Like what is cloud like the, at all, but also like why do we need it in the world? Um, and that's what I really liked about, you know, kind of working with AWS a bit more serverless framework to see like, okay, it's still kind of a pain to, you know, set up your entire infrastructure. And then there are tools like serverless framework that try to like simplify that, which is fun to see like, okay, what are people working on nowadays? And then of course, like with visualizations, um, like what I do there kind of like when I create those articles, I just want to be the person that I missed when I like learned certain things. Cause I'm definitely a visual learner. And I was like, things didn't always make sense to me when I was learning about JavaScript or about, I don't know, any technology really. So once I, you know, had done all my research, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm like, that took me like a week to really fully understand the concept. I don't want other people to go through the same pain. So like, I'll just something that I missed. Maybe other people want it as well. And uh, yeah, people seem to like it. So I was like, okay, I'm glad I wasn't the only one that, you know, like visualizations when learning with, or learning new stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm still, so I'm still doing that. Well, I'm actually working on like new visualizations now for like, things i haven't done it in a couple of years now but i gotta get back into that um because yeah it's also just like a nice hobby you know after work i just want to create <laughs> visualization well i think like at the moment for example also with like the work at Vercel, what we're really pushing is like edge technologies so you know you still have you know when you're working with a server like a single region server that is fine for you know a pretty small project but as your project grows that single server won't really suffice because at some point users from asia or wherever europe want to you know visit your website if you just have that single server it would take a very long time for them to actually reach that you know that makes your entire website like the performance just is so bad and you know crawlers like google immediately are like oh your website is bad so your seo won't be as good so it's important that, you know, you have a very uh, performant website, but that's also a big part of the server. So now, of course, then uh, like AWS came with like, okay, serverless kind of Lambda functions. So, you know, you don't have like that single server like running all the time anymore. But now we have those Lambda functions that can kind of, you know, spin up as a user requests it. And then it, you know, t terminates again once it's not necessary anymore. And that was also, this is only like four or five years ago which was a good kind of step in between. But that also raised some issues because 
starting up that like non-continuous server could take some time. It's called like cold boot and whatever. So people were still like, okay, this is like kind of nice, but it's not perfect. So like where, for example, it's going now is with like edge functions, which use like a different runtime. So it's pretty much kind of still like that serverless function, but way smaller. So retrieving resources from that edge function take way less time. Um, and yeah, it's, it's not like as complete as like a serverless function, but like, that's just interesting to see like, okay, now we're pushing like the edge technology there because even like, this is like that kind of the rate at which server technologies, cloud technologies, all these cloud infrastructure companies like AWS, Google, um, develop these things. It's like exponential, like almost every year, like, oh my God, I'm already like behind because I forgot to like read something one week. Um, but just seeing how like how fast the web is growing and not only the web, like the entire internet, like interweb of things, I should say, is extremely interesting. And there's just so much to learn and so much that you can do with all these things that you don't really, you're not like tied to just one. Oh yeah, I'm a web developer. I create websites. No, because once you know these technologies, you can do honestly anything you want to do. So yeah, it's definitely interesting to see like where people are kind of pushing the boundaries now, which I think is always very cool. Like we're still at the edge of technology. Well, like I was always like coding when I was a bit younger, like during my teenage years, I didn't know what coding was. I was just so, cause I was on Tumblr a lot. So I created like templates and that was apparently CSS, JavaScript, uh, and just like HTML. But I just thought it was like a feature in Tumblr. I didn't know what it was. Uh, so I don't know. I, I liked it then. I was like, okay, this is very straightforward to me. Like, I know what to do. I, I'm getting good at this. Um, but as I got older, I was like, oh, so this is actually like programming. Hmm. So I kind of started to research like JavaScript and stuff like that. But I had no idea that like that was a career. I just thought like this is just a very random niche thing because I always wanted to be um, like where I was really inter interested in like molecular biology. Um, so I always wanted to study that. I was like, that that will be my career path. I want to go to university, all that. But after high school, I took a gap year. And I was like, actually, I don't want to go to university. I really didn't like school. Uh, yeah. So then I was like, oh my God, what should I do instead? You know, I kind of had this like midlife crisis. Um, and then people were like, you know, you can just like code for a living, right? I was like, what? I had no idea. So then I just like continued doing that. And initially I was not super interested because again, this was like all front end that I was used to. And I was like, wow, that's kind of lame. But then I got introduced to like more back end technologies initially with like Ruby on Rails, which isn't necessarily all back end, but like it's more back end. Uh, and then a Python and then eventually like React. So still front end. But then I mainly focused on like, you know, Node and like, all those backend things um but i guess yeah when i was a bit younger because my dad <laughs> was always or is a like cybersecurity person so he always pushed me into like computer science so i was always like i don't want to do that like if my if my parents wanted to do that then it must be lame um so that's kind of how i well, it was a bit like oh i don't want to be in tech but then i saw just how different it actually was than like you know what like school books told you about it because these are like everything is outdated if it's older than like three years old, to be honest, when you're working with like JavaScript or like all those things. So, yeah, I'm very glad that, you know, I made that step and I haven't stopped ever since. I've just been coding like nonstop for the past. It's already been six years. So, yeah. Developer advocate stuff. So, um, yeah, I guess, I guess that was just more of a personal thing because like I was coding so much and I still, I love it, but it's my comfort zone because like you can entirely zone out. It's kind of like your little escape to me. Like, and I was like, okay, that is cool. But am I still like progressing personally? Like, what do I really want to do? You know, I was 23 years old. I was like, okay, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm kind of like trying to find the right path. So with my developer advocacy job, I was of course already speaking at like conferences and meetups for like my personal thing. But I wanted to get better at just talking professionally and networking professionally, all those things that, you know, I didn't or I get more time for that now, get more resources for that now. So also maybe me more like managerial, like more CTO ish type. Um, yeah. <laughs> networking is everything. And that's also something that I will always tell everyone is like try to almost make your personal brand out of 
your career when you're a bit younger because I started you know my Instagram when I I, I mean I, there were like no people on Instagram on tech I was kind of like okay I just feel like bored I didn't know what to do so I just started that and ever since like my network while well, online has just expanded into like so many different things like I know so many people now just because I started posting my like journey it's like okay I'm like learning about this now I'm learning about that now and people you know they're always so helpful and they love to see younger people and especially girls like really interested in tech trying to get into it so yeah like and I know I think I guess it's TikTok nowadays because it used to be Instagram then but just sharing that it it is everything it has changed my life a hundred percent I would never have been here if I wasn't on social media sharing that and yeah so of course it's not the only like you shouldn't only have an online network <laughs> also have your actual network but that that comes like eventually like automatically as you get invited to more things and stuff like that <laughs> java luckily never i really don't like java um no so i mainly work with javascript well typescript um and then like Let's see, what else do we got? Well, we've got like, I've worked with like serverless technology, but that's usually still in Node. Um, some Python. Um, what else? It's like so many things that like you work with, but it's not like, oh, I'm actively programming in it. It's more like you just need to know because it makes everything like together. I don't think there's like a language that I haven't really worked with, but when it comes to Java, it's just like, okay, like that's more for like native development. I think nowadays that people are still actively using that for, I guess, Android, maybe wrong here. Um, but even then, you know, there are more modern technologies nowadays that just make it so much easier to work with it. And of course, Java is used like in so many d different things. It's still very good to know. Um, but personally, like, I don't know. I think I mainly work with the technology technologies branched off of that for now, but I still think it's a very good base to just know that because a lot of like the language features from Java are still present in like so many other languages that it's very easy to learn those if you, you know, know Java very well. Yeah. Um, I mean, of course, it's not like as many as men, but definitely like a lot and also in like very high up positions and they're amazing. Like it's, I think what I often see with like, of course, you still mainly work with men, which I think also completely fine, but a lot of those more like powerful women in tech, they definitely kind of embrace the more feminine side of it. Because I think what a lot of women tend to do is like, they act more masculine because it and that, that makes sense it's almost like a natural thing it's like oh I kind of have to be like strong and like assertive to make it into the tech world but that's actually not true at all I think the more you embrace like okay like your feminine aspects also have a lot of um like additional thing like we maybe pay a bit more attention to detail we're maybe a bit more um I guess like emotional when it comes to it um that is not a bad thing. I think that brings like so many new insights into tech and like the way you program, the way you think about problems that, um, yeah, a lot of men maybe have more struggle with. Of course, it's also it's completely dependent on the person, but it, it's something just interesting that I also noticed. And it's a mistake that I used to make as well when I was like younger getting into coding. I was like very, I try to be like the guys, but then it just didn't work like it like I don't know it just felt so wrong to me so now I'm just like completely myself I'm like yes I'm a woman and like I like to wear dresses while I write code that's completely fine like it shouldn't matter um so yeah no I and I love like I think there are probably like more women now even than when I started but yeah I don't think like even when I like asked my dad when I was a bit younger, it's like, dad, well, like, what do you do? You ever see that women like there aren't as many women in tech than men? And he was like, it's not really the case when you look like higher up, you know, like really that higher management executives also in tech, they're often women for these exact reasons because we're just better at, like communicating, like doing all those things. Um, but yeah, I think if you're a girl in tech, you shouldn't or you should try to learn to not be like intimidated by just being surrounded by men because it will happen. And initially it might feel a bit uncomfortable, especially when you're younger and you're like, oh, I don't dare to like speak up in meetings or like they probably know way better than me. Like the more I learn about it, like guys are often just like talking the way through without knowing anything. But it's just because they talk about it that they seem like they're smart and know everything. No, they're just like 
they're not as scared to like share an opinion if they aren't sure. And I feel like a lot of girls are like, no, I need to be 100% sure before I say something. Otherwise, I may seem dumb, stuff like that. Um, yeah, those are things that like you learn along the way, but they can be difficult in the beginning. But it's totally worth just diving right into it and being like, no, I'm here and I'm just as like valuable as everyone else. <laughs> but it's it's sometimes hard to just you know to think that to yourself. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess yeah. The kind of what I just said. Like everyone has their own like individual strengths, and you know, if you try to be that stereotypical computer scientist or whatever, like that nerdy like Silicon Valley type, if that's not you, then don't try to be that. Like. Everyone is so unique and everyone, especially when you are more creative and, you know, often it seems like, oh, when you're a computer science, you're very logical, you're not creative. But like the more creative you are, the better your code will be because it's not just like copying, you know, certain algorithms, certain code patterns that you've learned in your books. No, it's really thinking about, okay, but what am I actually trying to do here? Um, like coming up with way more relevant or efficient ways to code, I think ties in with your creativity and being like, Maybe we don't even need this entire feature. Maybe we don't even need, you know, everything that, like, this entire, um, well, essentially you create, like, tech debt in your own head. It's like, wait, why do we have this entire boilerplate? We actually can just get around this entire different way. Um, but yeah, you, you just need that creativity in you. And a lot of, like, when it's diverse, like, men and women, we just kind of complement each other. It's like, women have this aspect or they look at things way different than men and just talking to each other about it can really lead to very I don't know like interesting results I find just do it <laughs> and start with javascript not Java. <laughs> start with javascript and especially react but I think that yeah it, it's difficult for me to really give advice besides that I definitely would not have been inspired by that when I was younger but it just like it opens up your world to so many, so many opportunities. Not and like many people think like, oh, coding is like I can create a website, I can create, I don't know, like I can work for Google, whatever. But it's like it's everything you interact with on a daily basis, especially as you know you get older. It will only be more and more relevant. So if you start coding now, you're still at the very beginning. Like it will only get so much better. But yeah, like your entire life will just be very easy if you know how to code and if you're interested in it. But there are like so many different like aspects to coding and tech that I feel like everyone can find their interest in tech. It doesn't have to be coding, but there are just so many different things that, yeah, it just, you just have to be exposed to it unless of course you don't know.